So it's, it's a product. And now even once COVID is over, we're still going to use that product and that's going to generate, you know, more revenue for the business. Hey guys, today we have the pleasure of interviewing Kyle. Kyle's the owner of the Nimble Bar out in Victoria. And the whole reason why I invited Kyle to come on board, and thank you so much for your time, Kyle, is because I read this article about how he was able to make an extra $49,000 by creating a digital bartending guide uh, and all his experiences. And I thought that what better way to give back to our audience than to have him on board to, dis to actually just break it down piece by piece of how he was able to do that. So he, we can actually um, replicate that in our businesses to create more additional revenue streams. Uh, and hopefully, I think this comes at a very, very timely um, moment where a lot of people would want to create additional um, streams of revenue through uh, having these digital courses uh, or even uh, a hybrid of an experience. So thank you so much for coming on board, Kyle. Um, without further ado, why don't you tell us a little bit more about how you started the Nimble Bar Company? Yeah, you bet. Uh, well, thanks for thanks for having me, Wilson. Happy to be here. Um, so, uh, my partner and I started Nimble Bar Company back in 2017. Uh, we were we were just a couple of bartenders at the time, and, uh, and we we knew that we had a pretty pretty great skill set, and and um, and a lot of people were asking us, um, you know, where we learned how to bartend, and um, instead of actually listening to them, we 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 thought we had all the answers, so we just decided we were going to create this event company. And, um, and we, we went on this kind of circus where we gallivanted across Canada, um, you know, making drinks in national parks. And it sounds cool, but it was actually a huge waste of time and money. Um, but we came back and we, we regrouped. And that's when we decided, you know what, we're going to create um, a bartending school. And we're going to use uh, the internet to get people to, to, you know, to check it out and to learn about it. And, um, and so here we are, um, so it's been a little under two years since we started that school and it's, yeah, it's generated, um, you know, uh, it's generated at least 49 grand, uh, there, you know, there are, you know, there are other payment gateways that we track that stuff with, but, um, yeah. And, you know, we do some other stuff too, like events and consulting and, uh, yeah, but at the end of the day, we're just, uh, we exist to, to, you know, train bartenders to a, just a high performance level or a you know, however masterful they want to be, that's, that's what we do. Right, right. So you started off as like a brick and mortar, like um, serving drinks as a bar for, you know, customers, and then slowly, you were able to kind of pivot and add an additional revenue stream by creating this digital online experience, a hybrid of it, and outsprung a lot more different offers. And it's something that I, I definitely talk about in some of my other videos as well is that you need to be able to look at your asset and see what we can do and be creative with it. And especially with the internet, we can actually do a lot more than to sit on this asset and not really optimize it to the best of its ability. Um, so why don't we actually break it down um, on uh, basically your six step process or whatever process that you have in, in generating and in pivoting it uh, from, you know, like just doing regular bar sales to adding an additional $49,000 to your bottom line. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, um, we're, so we have, we have this bar, right? Um, we're, you know, doing our thing at the bar and, uh, it sits there, uh, more or less dormant because it's a bar that's open from 5 PM onwards. Um, you know, more or less dormant during the day. And so we figured, well, what's something, um, what's a valuable thing that we can do that will, um, you know, be a great offering for the people, um, in our, in our town, but also for the bar itself, what could build its brand. And, um, and we just went back to that original question, which was, you know, where, where did you learn how to become a bartender or how did you learn to be as skilled as you are at it? And, um, what's funny about bar schools is that they're generally stigmatized. They're actually, um, not stigmatized positively either. People, people think that bartending schools are like, scams a lot of the time because um well frankly a lot of them are teaching super dated um you know a, a dated curriculum and so we we just wanted to create something that was the uh was sort of the antidote to that and um and so we put our heads together we also you know there's a ton of expertise um not only in our in our bar and restaurant but also in our city amazing sommeliers and um and cicerones and all this and that and so we um we just put together a really killer modern curriculum and um and yeah so 
So basically, for, for someone who's not in the bar industry, basically, they just need to look at what is valuable to their customers, the, the patrons that are coming into to the restaurant or their bars or their ice cream shop. What is it that they see as valuable and what can you as a service provider be able to match and, and, and offer that? So if it's like, a, let's say a barbecue, uh, let's say this diner is super famous for barbecue, perhaps a chef can teach someone how to do, do their barbecue sauce. Is that the right mindset that you come? Yeah, it gets a little meta when I'm like, oh, we're a bartending school. We're going to like teach other people how to make a bartending school. But that I think education in a nutshell is a really great answer, especially when you when you're talking about something that's niche like that, like a barbecue joint. Well, I guarantee there are a lot of people who would love to learn how to do barbecue the way that your mm-hmm. business does barbecue. It doesn't mean they're going to stop coming to you. In fact, they're probably going to come to you more because it's kind of like you guys are in it together. Um, and so, yeah, I think that that is the right, uh, the right mindset. I also think that when you look at bars and restaurants and, and hospitality businesses in general, what I love about them is they're like hotbeds of talent. You have, you have like these chefs who are so passionate and they just like, they could talk like for hours about some, like a way to cook something or, you know, with bartenders, bartenders are really passionate people and they can talk for hours about cocktails, et cetera, et cetera. And so I think that there's often a real opportunity with just your team and your staff to build something on top of what you're already doing that educates the people who come to your spot already. And then you can probably take that curriculum that you build together and you can maybe begin to scale it and create digital programs or eBooks or blah, 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 blah. Um, so I, you know, there's a, a ton of opportunity, I think, just, just, you know, it's just there and we just have to tap into it. So basically, okay, now that we have figured out what we want to offer our our customers, hey, you know what, this is something I'm really good at, super passionate, we have all the resources. Now, the next step that you guys followed was, is did you have an offer that you wrote the sales page right away or just like talk to customers, prove your concept or what exactly was your next step? Once it finally hit me and I wish I was smarter and it hit me sooner, um, once it hit me that like, dozens of people were asking us, where did you learn how to do this? I, and, and after our kind of failed at first attempt at like building something outside of the bar restaurant, um, well then, then I, I went into product development mode and I was like, okay, I got to put this thing onto a sales page so that somebody can see it and engage with it and decide either no, this isn't for me or yes, this could be for me and raise their hand and, and say, I, I want to learn more about this at least. And so I, I built that sales page and I, you know, I answered some basic questions like, you know, who's it for? Uh, what is it? How long is it? How much does it cost? Basic questions that you need to answer in order to have a product. And then, and then I'll tell you, I, I built that page. I showed my partner and I'm pretty sure that he was like, well, uh, bar schools are like, you know, it's a crap. It can be a bit of a crapshoot, right? Um, but I was like, I was like, no, I, I think, I think this could be something. And so I kept on like, people would ask me, where'd you learn how to bartend? And now I had a place to send them. I could say, Oh, check out nimblebarschool.com. And I kind of, I kind of said it like it was this going concern, like, Oh, check out nimblebarschool.com. And it was two months later that somebody actually like paid for it. And then, and then I told my, my partner, I was like, Hey man, so someone bought our bar school that we don't have yet. Um, and he, he was actually kind of pissed at the time, but, uh, but we, you know, we were like, we had thrown our hat over the proverbial fence. And so we, we had to kind of move forward with it. Um, but it, it turned out to, to, to be good in the end. So that's okay. We're going to pause that right there because for some of our, our, um, audience, they don't really understand what the sales page is, is basically a simple website with a long form content of just explaining people who you are, what your offer is, what your story is, some of your values, and then what kind of offer you have on in place. So basically just an informational page, super simple. It has just everything someone needs to know to make a buying decision. And my, the way I, I used to see sales pages online and I would like, I would devour some of them when it was something that I was interested in. And, um, and I would eventually buy from them. And I used to think, holy crap, how did somebody build this page? Because they can often be very long. Um, and, um, and then I, I, you know, I, I got on to, to Neville Medora and a few other copywriters. And I, I started to realize that it's really just a, a model. It's just a template. And they're out there on the internet. If you look up, you know, 
sales page model, sales page template or whatever, you'll find something that you can follow. And, um, and once I realized that, that's when I was like, holy crap, I can, I can build a product and I can answer all the questions that I need to answer. And then I can put it out there and I can just start getting feedback on it. Uh, right. It doesn't mean it, you know, it's a great way to validate something. Like, let's say you're, you know, you're that, that barbecue spot and you want to start a, I don't know, barbecue school or whatever. Um, well, you can create, this is the barbecue, you know, welcome to the barbecue school of Victoria or whatever. And you can send people to it. And if nobody raises their hand, then, you know, maybe, maybe tweak it a little bit um, until someone says, I want this. I want to, I want to give you, I want to, you know, raise my hand with uh, some money and I want to try it out. So does that, does that answer? Yeah. yeah, it does. And like, so for us to build that sales page is just any of the websites out there like Wex or like uh, Square, yeah. like all these different websites, simple page, you know, it's just plug and play right in some of your content and you should go. So nothing too technical. Cause I know some of our, our people, they're like, Whoa, what's going on with this whole sales page thing? Um, so super simple stuff. Uh, we're going to include some link in the, in the description below so people can have their yeah. resources to yeah. it. Dead, dead, dead simple. I mean, um, you can use like, uh, like in, in your links, you'll probably have, um, there are three that I often refer to. One is click funnels. Uh, another is lead pages. And then another is uh, Elementor or plugin for WordPress. And what's amazing about a lot of these is, um, especially with like click funnels and lead pages is, and lead pages, what I used at first, they have these temp, they're literally built in templates right. in the system. And you can usually try them with a free trial and, and, and you just, you just use the templates that they give you and, put in your own words and then you basically have a product that you can get feedback on. And it's, I think that that's the most, one of the most amazing things about the internet. Right. So basically, okay, you know what? You have an idea, you have your passion, you got your team together and now you have an offer that you want to push it out, but you don't know if people are going to buy into it. So which is the reason why you create a sales page so people can land in it to test the waters to see, Hey, is there such a demand for it before you spend hours building out your whole course before you spent hours doing all the advertisement. So you did the sales page and then the next step is well, what did you guys do? Yeah. So, so, okay. So I did the sales page and then it was two months after I made that sales page live that anybody paid anything. I didn't pay for ads. It was all just like people, people were coming to the bar and, and whenever somebody asked me as they, as they do, where did I learn how to do it? Bartend. I, I just send them there and I, I probably sent like four or five people there before anybody bought, which is a, which is pretty good. But, um, yeah, so that, so that's how I did it then. Um, I still think that's a fine approach, uh, you know, but I, because I, I didn't know anything about traffic back then. I didn't know, Oh, you could, you could run Facebook ads or, you know, um, you could, you could run Google ads, um, blah, blah, blah. I didn't, I didn't know really about SEO or anything like that. Um, now I, now I know a bit more about that stuff. So I'd probably build a page like that. And then I just send some traffic to it through Facebook ads and, and, and just see if, see if someone applies. I, I wouldn't, you know, I, I don't want to get too, too tactical, but like if it's, I think if nobody knows you, you're building a, a kind of a brand from scratch, it's pretty hard to, to take cold traffic and get them to pay like six, seven, eight hundred dollars on, you know, something and they've never heard of you. Um, but that's right. just what I think. But uh, yeah, so does that, does that answer your question? Oh, totally. I'm just thinking like, okay, you know, after the fact that we have the sales page, um, after you have someone bought from you guys, you must be like ex ex super happy. And then what, what happened after? Yeah. I, let me back up a second. Cause I, the smarter version of myself wouldn't, wouldn't pay for pay for ads or traffic. I just go to my network and I'd send emails to everybody I know. And I'd say, Hey, Hey, um, you know, fellow restaurant person or bartender or chef, Hey, what's up? I, uh, we're doing this thing. Uh, here it is. Can you, can you check it out and let me know what you think? Is there anybody, you know, who'd be interested that that's how I would do that. It's a smarter version of myself. Um, so then, then yes, we have our first sale. <laughs> we had our first sale and, um, and then I kind of went into like, I just got really scrappy and I, I, I went into, I fished at my feet. Have you ever heard that term? So you're fishing at your feet. So I'm just right where I was. I started, um, looking around to people who were maybe working at the bar, um, people uh, who I knew and I just, I would, you know, I'd send, send them to the page and, and people started saying, I, I think I wanna, I wanna do the bart bartending school. And so we made a number of our sales were to people who were at the, you know, at our bar and restaurant. Um, some, 
some, and then some people I'm in an entrepreneur network. And so I'll, almost all of our sales were, were word of mouth the, the first round. Um, and so that took about, it took about two months to fill up a class of 11 students. And how much were you charging? We were actually charging more in the beginning. In the beginning, it was, um, it was a $1,300 program. Wow. And that so you're looking with, at like- uh, which is, which is more than twice the price of most bartending schools you'll find. And, but it, it included a bit more. It included, um, you know, like this, we made these custom box kits with bar tools and it was, it was pretty cool. Um, we've since uh, brought the price down a bit to, um, to, to make it a little bit more accessible. And we also have different, different tiers, um, different packages. So, um, so let me, let me get that, uh, the timeline, um, down a little bit more. So two months of launching, two months of you completing the sales page, your first customer comes in, it took you another two months to fill the class to 13 people. You're selling it for like 1300 bucks. So you're looking at roughly another $17,000 for revenue after four months. Uh, yes, that's, that's more, about more or less. Yeah, that's about right. The, the, I mean, the beautiful wow. thing about having a higher ticket price point though, is that, so for the people who we knew who were at our establishment, we gave them a, like a discount, you know, it, like uh, we call it a bursary or a scholarship. And so we'd say, yeah, we like this, this is a really valuable skill set. Um, it's going to come back to our company. So, you know, we, you know, wh- one of, one of the students was a, a dishwasher. And so we, we gave like, we took care of most of it. So, you know, there, it gives you a little bit of, um, a little bit of flexibility to have that higher price point, um, right. to, you know, to, to, to pay it forward a little bit and give, give bursaries to, to people who, you know, like a dishwasher isn't making a ton of money. So, and he, he works at our bar and he became, uh, an amazing asset as a bartender later on. It would like, and his skill, he went from a dishwasher, to, no, to a, to a cook, a line cook. And then he just became this magnetic bartender it was about you know a year after he finished our program and then he came he he became our bar manager as well so wow um, yeah it's that that's that's a shit that I, like i love that stuff yeah that's um, amazing that, what a what a good story what, what an amazing story and good for you guys to actually change this this person's life around you know that means a lot more than the 1500 or fifteen thousand dollars that you guys made that's freaking crazy yeah that's i mean that's <laughs> if that's kind of our our benchmark for like how what impact is this making on the students are they are they actually um when we have them come into the program we actually have them state what their desire like what their desired outcome is and mm-hmm. then we have this certification process at the end and all the certification process is is it's just an insurance policy on their own desired outcome you know um like when people when people ask us well will the certification help me get a job that's like a red flag for us we're like that's that's not the idea of this program. It's not, if you want to get a job, like let's chat on the phone a couple of times. We'll help you think strategically about how to get a job. You don't need to take our program. You take our program because you want to be really excellent at this thing, you know? And so when people sell themselves on their own outcome, and then we had a certification process that holds them to that. Um, well, well, we have a pretty good completion rate. And, um, and, and yeah, people, people do get the results they're after because, you know, we're not here telling them what you want to get out of it. We're here saying, well, tell us what you want to get out of it. And then we have this process at the end that's going to be the best insurance policy to make sure you get what you came for. If that makes sense. Does that make sense? It does. It does. And actually it's it's really interesting that you, you know what, for, for our audience, they are like, wow, it seems like you know what you're doing right from the get-go with like a certification with like, you know what, four months and you filled the program an additional $15,000. Like, how was your first class like? Like, oh, tell us the won't. disaster stories. Like, I think that's what people want to know. Like, and then like, let's say for example, same, same example of our barbecue, master barbecue mm-hmm. course, right? So yeah. in, in that context, like first class, like, you know, I'm teaching people how to make my, my secret barbecue sauce what should i be expecting what did you expect what are some of the crazy stories that that did not happen that's a that's an awesome question so i would say i felt fear uh from the very beginning so one one thing that we did do is we we had a lot of help like i it wasn't just myself and my partner as instructors we had like two other really great bartenders um 
we had, uh, and we still do have, these guys all still teach with us. Uh, we have a sommelier um, and then we have um, a beer expert. And so, you know, we're just kind of really leaning on experts to, to teach specific modules. The first scary point in my head was in the beginning, our classes were three hours each and we'd sort of outlined what it was, what like each class was going to be. And, um, and I kind of felt like I had this responsibility to do a lot of like this talking. It's almost like pontificating or something, which is the, the opposite of, I think what like a really great teacher does. Um, and I w we were half an hour into the first class of a three hour class. And I found myself done the list of things that I thought we should cover. And so I was like, Oh my God, I'm, there's no way we're going to be able to fill up, you know, three hours of time. Right. And, um, and so it, 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 it was a disaster in my head. It was like, you know, I was making it up because as soon as we started engaging with the students and, 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 and getting them to practice drills and stuff like that, um, every, it just like flows like shit through a goose. And, um, and funnily enough, when they, when we put the, the, the onus on them to like to practice and to do drills, they find they get the most out of it and they, they have the most fun. And so it's, I think there's this, like, there's this, you got to kind of get out of your own head and what you think a teacher does or a professor or whatever. And you just need to understand that you just got to ask them the questions. Well, what are they trying to get out of it? And let's do it. Let's, okay. You want to, you want to have a great shake. Let's, let's practice shaking. If you want to be good at flipping tins, we'll practice that. We'll practice stirring. Um, palette development, blah, 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 blah. So that was, I think that was the first, like, yeah, it was kind of a perceived, a mental thing that I was like, oh man, we're gonna, we're totally screwed here. I don't know how we're gonna fill up this time. For, for someone that wants to replicate something like this, let's say for example, for my barbecue sauce, like after the idea that I have, you know, a curriculum that I've, I've set out, you know, that I wanna teach, whether it be five lessons, six lessons, three hours each, whatever the case may be, which matches to my price point, then I just need to, you know, put it out there and then we need to just get out of their heads and see what's working, engage with our audience to see what flows, what sticks, what doesn't flick and just make sure we make notes throughout the whole process, right? Like talk, did, were you able to document the whole process? Not all of it. Um, mm. because we just didn't have enough forethought or if we were really, really smart, we, we would have had a videographer there like for the whole, we would have been able to make so much more, and it's not about the money, but it's kind of about the money, so much more money, you know, in future courses, because a lot of, you know, I would say that um, when it comes to bartending, I'd say like 20% of it is uh, knowledge and 80% of it is just skill and, and how you are as like a, a person, your ability to, you know, just talk to anybody, that sort of thing. Um, a lot of the knowledge stuff, was actually taking up a lot of time. And so I think that had we just recorded it and just delivered that stuff digitally before the course, that would have um, made the, the learning experience much better. We're doing that, you know, now, now we've sort of got our ducks in a row. And so now we're doing that, but um, no, no, that's exactly what it is. I think like having a videographer document the process, even oh, yeah. for example, if for, for, for those that don't have the budget for videography, um, they can actually just take notes on, on basically each of the progress, uh, the logistics, yeah. what you can improve, yeah. what, what went well, what didn't go well, improvements. Yeah. So in that way, we can actually create the system and well-oiled machine and then feed this through a couple more times find that product market fit, find something that works before we digitalize the whole thing. Was that something you did? Yeah. Yeah. And, and something else we do is, um, uh, we would get, uh, we get previous students. Cause one thing that's really, we're really proud of about the program is like, um, students become evangelists of it and they like, they like love it. And we're still trying to figure out why it's like a really nice surprise. But, um, so we've invited some students to come back and take the program again as like an, like an auditor. And so they'll audit it and they'll, and they can actually talk to the students who are maybe like, um, having a tough time and they'll say, well, this is a really good way to study this particular section. Um, and we'll also have them take notes for like, what are we really sucking at here? Like, uh, you know, um, what are we missing? Where is the curse of knowledge, uh, getting in the way for us? and and sort of acting as a barrier between 
what we're trying to communicate and what they're actually getting the students. You know what? That's actually a really important point that um, uh, I'm sorry for interrupting you, but like this is a freaking amazing point because when you're able to introduce students back in to help you guys out, it really works out the kinks because you don't know what you don't know from your standpoint. We're on like right here trying to teach. We don't know the perspective of the students. So having them in who's someone who's been there, done that, come in to give you insight about what to really focus on. Some of the basically barriers, as you said, within your own specific trade is so, so important. Same thing with, you know, barbecue sauces or making even ice cream, right? Like you got to tilt that cup in the 45 degree angle in order for you to make that swirl. Something along the lines of that. These are trade secrets that you uh, being in the business for so long that you take for granted that, you know, everyone should know that the cup should be tilted at 45 degrees. And that's exactly the, the, the trap that I fall into myself when with our ice cream shop. So thanks for bringing that up. So for example, like, you know what, we tweaked it a few times, got the students to come in, refine the project. And then the next step is to digitalize this whole thing and make it so then that way you're not putting in extra time all the time. How many, like, what's the process then? To make, put it online, right? So for example, oh, yeah. your whole so, course was like 15 grand. Um, no, your whole first class was 15 grand. I assume the next, the next cohort was like yeah. three, four months later. Yeah. Refined, yeah. So you know. like what's amazing about an educational experience is that you can repurpose in a whole bunch of ways. So, you know, for example, um, one of the things we've done in real life is we've taken individual modules and we've offered them as, you know, hour, hour and a half workshops to the public. And so we'll, you know, we'll use, there are some bars that are closed at night um, on certain days, like, like Sunday, Monday is really common. So we'll, you know, we'll say, hey, uh, bar owner, um, could we use your space? And we'll like, we'll give you some money or, you know, oftentimes they're happy to just have the space used. And, um, and we'll have people come to these workshops. Um, so that's one way, way we've done it. But what you can do online is you can take each of those many of the modules and you turn them into individual products right so um one of our modules is is spirits it's all about spirits we'll train you on every whiskey um great base spirits agave spirits um etc 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 talk to you about the theory of those spirits and then we'll also train your palate uh so we'll train you on how to taste it etc 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 and so just to give you an example we're now taking that module and we're making it like 10 times better by making it its own standalone digital product called Spirit Mastery. And so that's just one product. So what went from being um, just, just one module of our entire course is now it's, an, it's, it's, now its own product. Um, so, so we've taken all the stuff that we've learned from administering this module and we put it all into this like killer product that we think will be the, the most effective resource on how to learn about spirits in the world. And it also solves a major problem for people who are getting into this world. When my first bartending job was at a, a bar where there were probably like 300 spirits. And every single time, every day I had to work, I had intense anxiety and overwhelm because I'm like, I have no idea how to navigate this. If somebody asked me about a bottle, and this, by the way, this is an ex expectation that some people have is that like, you should know everything about every bottle. I would like shave my pants. So, so that's why this, this is a way for somebody to learn these spirits in a fun way and an effective way in a way that's engaging and, uh, and isn't overwhelming. I would test your, like, let's say your barbecue sauce, you know, and have different modules and test them with people in real life. And then you could possibly I mean, I don't know if this applies for barbecue sauce, but you can make it its own, like, I don't know, maybe, I, don't, I, don't, I have no idea. I don't know too much about the barbecue sauce thing, but do you, does that make sense as like, as an approach? Well, yes, of course. Like, you know what? The whole course is so many different modules, taking it down into bite size. How much are you selling the spirit mastery for? So this is something we're going to test. We're, we're going to sell it for 97 bucks for the course, which is really low, but, but part of it is it's like, we're starting the process over again as we, go completely digital. And, you know, we, we, we hope that people will be enrolled in the journey and the development of this program so that, you know, 97 bucks to learn everything about spirits is, is, is not that much. So your alternative is you could go on YouTube or whatever, but then you're just, you're swimming in a sea of stuff and you don't know, like, you know, what, what will stick and what won't. And that's kind of the problem. Um, and, but then we get feedback. That's, that's what we want. I, I would, I'll, 
I'll even bring in probably a number of people for free because the feedback is what we're after at this stage. Um, and, and it's just the same as, as it was in the beginning. Um, because while we're taking a lot of stuff we've learned and putting it online, it's, it's, it's still a new, it's still a new product. So we, we need that feedback more than anything. Right. So basically you, you created that course, you created different modules, um, in, in-house experience for, for your guests. And now that you, you find something that it's working and you're like, Hey, you know what? Now it's time to bring that digital. And that's when you started to record the whole experience, have your own kind of templates, and then you're now able to host it. Where do you host it? Like, let's say, for example, for, for our listeners, they're like, hey, you know what? I have a bunch of video files now. I have a bunch of documents. Um, uh, I think, like, actually for me, my course, like, we use uh, ClickFunnels. I think, like, ClickFunnels is an amazing tool. Upload your, your, your clip on YouTube, unlist it, private it, and then it's just drag and drop, super simple. I'm not sure, is that, is that something you use? Uh, yeah, so <laughs> this is a can of worms. Um, I've, I've used ClickFunnels. I've used Teachable, Thinkific, all these things. Where I'm at right now, actually, what I think the best solution is for this stuff, especially if you're kind of early on in the in the process, is uh, do you know Kartra? Yes. yes so yes, yes, yes. so Kartra Kartra is a whole bunch of tools in one. It's it's an email service provider. It's a it's a it's a website builder thing. Um, and I think that and it also has pretty great uh, templates. And it's also a really great membership site solution. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what we're really look, looking for. So inside Kartra, and sorry if this is too technical, but inside Kartra you have a membership site thing that you can use to build things. And you have a portal site which can hold all those membership sites. Right. And the way a membership site is basically its own course. So Spirit Mastery is one of the membership sites. And then the Nimble Bartending School overall will be its own portal site that will house these different products, these di like spirit mastery, cocktail mastery, et cetera, et cetera. Does that makes totally, sense. Uh, it makes sense to me. I don't want to throw my audience okay. off. Like, cause like that's very, very technical. Um, you know, something super simple that uh, I find like a lot of people have been using and with great successes like click funnels and, and you know what, and it's something that I personally use. You basically record, upload it on, uh, whatever documents you have, upload it, and it becomes a, a, a website for people that they can pay, give them their access, and they're good to go and, and access it, right? Um, um, so I want, does ClickFunnels uh, let you have like a login gateway thing? Yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. Okay. yeah. So there's something that I use, and I find great success with it. Like a lot of my students like it and enjoy it. So once again, in the description link below, so you know people can check it out. Um, so then now for the people that, hey, you know what? They have the course try it out and you know what they're gonna throw it online they're gonna try it out funnel people through now that this is all done what's the next step to make it like a, um to scale it to make more people go into it because you know what for you you got your 15k um from your in in-house people now you're able to kind of reach and, and tap into the internet so anyone that wants to learn how to do um uh cocktails they would come to you how did you yeah. drive that traffic? I want to stress before, before, before we start talking about traffic um, and before people get like too bogged down in like software and stuff like that, I, I think what's so important is that I, and I just want to reiterate, um, it's just so important to build that kind of, I call it a minimum valuable product, not viable, but this is like, it's a valuable product. It's, it's not, but it's not like what it's going to end up being. It's just the minimum thing and just start getting feedback. And even if this product is in Google Docs, you know, part, a big part of your course can, like our course is built in Google Docs. Our, our sales page was built in Google Docs. Um, get, get that stuff down, get the first two to three modules in Google Docs. And then, and then ask people questions, get the feedback on it before you get, because what I, what I worry happens is people like spend so much time looking at templates and looking at different software and they just don't get anything done, you know? So, um, what matters isn't so much the software as the content, mm -hmm. the, you know, the, the results that you're promising and how you're promising to, to, to get, to help them get that result. So I, it's just a caveat that I want to put out there. Um, for us, what we did for, for traffic is, uh, primarily face, Facebook ads. Um, pri primarily Facebook ads. And um, yes, I've worked a lot on um, organic stuff. So search engine optimization, um, which, and I, oh, another caveat is that a lot of this stuff sounds technical and hard and scary, but it's not. 
Mm. It's, it's just, it's not. And, and if anybody ever wants to hit me up and ask me a question about Facebook ads or anything, like, please, please do. Cause I, I could, I could talk about it till I'm blue in the face. But, um, uh, so we did face Facebook ads, I would say is pro- was probably the biggest driver of our business. Um, now SEO is, is getting up there as we're getting some, some good, uh, backlinks and we're just getting better. We're getting better at content. Um, what, I mean, we've done some Google ads, but I, our results haven't been as good as they have been with Facebook ads. Um, probably cause I didn't know how to do them very well. Um, and that's, that's it. And then, you know, a lot, a lot of word of mouth, a, right. a lot of word of mouth. Um, we had one of our students buy, they, they took our program and they, they bought it for a friend as a gift, you know, like, oh. so, um, so, so like, that's actually, I think to the extent of if for everyone just pulls out all the hair, like, I think that's, that's to the extent of like how you're able to build in, in a gist, of course, there's a lot more to it. Uh, and it's just of how you, you brought in an additional $49,000. That's amazing for you guys. Right. Um, so I guess like for the listeners who, you know, we're in the middle of the crisis right now and like everything shut down, is there any way, shape or form that you think people can actually take advantage of this time? to build something like this. I personally think there's so many different ways for people to build an asset right now, especially because they're not doing too much for the people that are not doing delivery whatsoever. Right now you have, you have two camps of people, right? You have, you have the folks who are sitting on their hands. They're kind of frozen and honestly kind of sloth like, uh, and then you have the people who are, you know, responding, they're pivoting, they're, they're still, they're still going about like the the circum the context has really changed, but they're they're rolling with the punches, um, and I I think that the people who are rolling with the punches once this has passed, the wind's going to be at their back. The the ones who have frozen, and it's it's a nat- I'm sure it's a natural human thing that it's going to be tough to get going again. And so what you can do right now is um, is you can open Google Docs and you can build a product and. And, you know, you start by answering the basic questions who, and well, before that, if you don't have any ideas, talk, talk to your talented team, talk to the, the people in your network, say, you know, get somebody on the phone and say, I, I, I would like to brainstorm some ideas for a product. You like, you, you can just call, call me, you know, uh, send me an email, say, Hey, I, I have this, I have this cafe or I have this or that. I, um, I'm looking for some ideas of, you know, something that I can build into my business so that when we open up, I have an additional thing, you know, an additional source of revenue or, or just some, you know, something that differentiates you. It could be anything. It could be, could be, um, it could be an educational experience. It could be a consulting arm. It could be a catering arm. If that's your thing, you know, I mean, there are just all kinds of things. Um, but I think it just starts with a Google doc and it starts by writing it out. And so, um, I mean, everyone's situation is so wildly different. I, I certainly, I certainly don't claim to have the answer, but, um, and think about the things that could accrue into your business. So for example, our partner bar, little jumbo here in Victoria, um, right away, like our team got at it. And, you know, I think we were probably the first spot that I know of that made backpack cocktails, you know, these mm. like really cool backpack cocktail kits. And, you know, these are things that we could ship conceivably. Um, so it's, it's a product. And now even once COVID is over, we're still going to use that product and that's going to generate, you know, more revenue for the business. You know, we have, we, our whole website went from being a very simple static landing page with not a lot on it to now, now they have an online store. The, uh, the owner over there, he, he's now learning about SEO and he's learning about how to rank high for certain things that will always, these are things that will accrue into the business and always help the business. Yeah. Again, I, I don't have the answer, but I, you know, it's, it's action and it's just writing something down so that you can send it to someone and say, Hey, what, what do you think about this? Is this, is this stupid or, you know, could, could we have something here? Um, I love so- your feedback. It's like, you make such a good point because at the end of the day, like with restaurant business, like we're working on such thin margins. So anything definitely helps, you know, who doesn't want an extra 50 K on their top line, bottom line, whatever the case is per month, like that's going to make a difference between someone that's like pulling their hair out or someone that's actually having something that cash flows for them, which is amazing. And at the end of the day, like what you're saying is so on point where, you know, during this whole crisis, we have a choice to make. 
We have a choice to either, you know, blame the world, blame and be victimizing ourselves and just sitting on our butt and just waiting for the whole thing to blow by, not knowing when it's going to blow by. Or we can take action because at the end of the day, the rules of the game have changed. Doesn't mean we just sit. We can adapt to it and continue playing the game. And at the end of the day, it's the people who are willing to adapt, who are willing to take action. That's going to be able to make a difference. That's going to be being able to live to fight another day. And I think that's the real true characteristics of restauranteurs. And that's something that I, I really want to be able to inspire people to really have that fire under the belly that, you know what, the fight's not over. The game's not over. The rules have changed. We are we're just in the midst of it. We just need to adapt, change, and we're good to go. So thank yeah. you so much, Kyle. Like I, I, I truly appreciate you taking your time to share your experience with, with our audience. It, do you have any closing remarks? No, uh, I, no, I, I think that's, that's it. Thank you so much for having me on. I, um, yeah, no, I, it's, it's been fun. <laughs> thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. See you next time. Thanks, Wilson.